Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a fun 10 minute core circuit for you guys, follow along style, which means all you have to do is keep watching and follow along with us as we go through each movement. All right, first movement is a body weight sit up. So Colin and I are demonstrating two different versions here. I've got my arms extended behind my head and then he's got his elbows bent and pulled into his side. So his version is going to be a little more difficult than mine. As you can see here, we're coming all the way up as far as we can into a sit up, trying to reach our chest to our knees, making sure we're getting a good contraction in our core, pulling that belly button into the spine and then making sure we're exhaling at the top of the movement and then inhaling as we lower back down. One thing to be aware of here too is to not let momentum control the movement. So just make sure that you're using your core to pull yourself up and using your core to bring yourself back down. Movement number two is called an alternating plank hip dip. So there are two ways you can perform this movement. You can be on your hands and wrists in a high plank position like we are demonstrating here, or you can move on down to your forearms. If you're on your forearms, make sure your elbows are directly underneath your shoulders. If you're on your hands and wrists like we show here, make sure they are directly underneath your shoulders as well. So what we're gonna do here is we're starting in a high plank position and then we're rotating our hips to either side, making sure that they are hovering about one to two inches off of the floor, making sure we're really squeezing our core, keeping it nice and tight. This movement is primarily going to target your obliques, so the sides of your abdominals. All right guys, movement number three is a V-sit crunch. Uh, it can be done one of two ways. I'm doing it more with a stiff leg while Katie's pulling her knees in toward her chest, bending them more. My way is a little bit more difficult, so pick accordingly. The main goal with this movement is to really open up that core as we lean back, we should be inhaling. And then as we bring our knees or our legs toward us, we should be contracting, exhaling, squeezing as hard as we can. Movement number four is a side plank with a reach through. So when you set up for a side plank, we should be thinking about keeping our elbows underneath our shoulders, stacking those feet, and then keeping those hips up, squeezing our obliques in order to maintain a straight line from our feet all the way up to our shoulders. Now with that reach through movement, we want to try to scoop that upper arm underneath. You want to rotate those hips, contract that core, contract those obliques and then open back up. So we should be thinking inhale as we open up and then exhale as we come through and squeeze as we scoop through. Movement number five is the same as four. We're just switching to the other side, but performing it the exact same way.
All right, movement number six is a lying leg raise. So again, there are different variations you can do with this one. Colin has his arms out to the sides. I have mine underneath my low back for some extra support. So basically, regardless of where your hands are, your arms are, you're gonna keep your legs as straight as possible. You'll have just a slight bend in those knees. What we're doing here is we are raising both legs up at the same time, nice and slow, contracting our core, keeping it nice and tight as we do so, and then slowly lowering on the way down. So you don't wanna to touch your heels to the ground, try to keep them about one to two inches above the floor. This will help keep tension on your abdominals throughout the entire movement, and then you'll slowly go back into that raised position. Moving on to movement number seven, we have windshield wipers. You want to set up in a similar fashion to the lying leg raises, keeping your entire back on the floor. You want to try to keep those hands far out to the side to stabilize your body. We should be pressing into the ground. And then while those legs stay straight, instead of moving straight down, we should be angling toward the side to target those obliques. You let those legs come out at about a 45 to 55 degree angle and then keep that core nice and tight. Don't let that lower back come off of the ground. Exhaling as we come toward the ground and then inhaling as we transition to that other side. Movement number eight is a dead bug. So to set up for this, we are gonna be lying supine. So on our backs, make sure your back is nice and flat. If you find there is space between your upper and lower back, make sure you tuck your pelvis into the floor. We are going to raise our legs at a 90 degree angle. Our arms are gonna be straight up overhead. So with this one, we're moving opposite limbs at the same time. So we're extending one leg and our opposite arm making sure our back stays flat the entire time, our core stays tight, pull that belly button into your spine. We're exhaling as we lower, inhaling as we bring our leg and our arm back to the starting position. Super important here not to let that back arch as you lower your leg. Make sure that your pelvis stays tucked on the floor. Movement number nine is going to be a plank shoulder tap. So we're in a high plank position with this movement, meaning hands and wrists are directly underneath our shoulders. So we wanna maintain a nice straight line from our neck down through our low back, down through our ankles to start. If you need to, you can widen your stance, widen your feet for a greater base of support with this movement. What we are doing is we're taking one hand, reaching up towards our opposite shoulder, tapping that shoulder, and then bringing that hand back to the floor or to the ground, and then alternating sides. So as you bring your hand to meet your opposite shoulder, you wanna make sure that your core is staying as stable as possible, your hips are staying stable as possible, or as stable as possible, and you're not rotating from side to side with your torso. So keep everything nice and in line, nice and tight as you move through this exercise. Movement number 10, our last movement of the day is a jackknife crunch. We're gonna wanna start laying on our backs. We're gonna have our legs and arms outstretched, spread in a star pattern. When we go to crunch, it's going to be an opposite arm, opposite leg movement. So again, we are going to be trying to really target those obliques. So as you reach up with your arms, you should simultaneously be pulling that leg up with it and then contracting that oblique as tightly as you can, exhaling at the top before opening back up, controlling the movement down, taking a nice inhale before alternating back and forth. Once we heal reference. <laughs>